Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Schillen here for the MMATakeover.com, and I'm back with another special interview. Today's guest is a fighter with a perfect 9-0 record, including 1-0 in the UFC. He returns to the Octagon at UFC Fight Night 106 on March 11th in Brazil. He's fighting against Ronnie Jason. His name is Jeremy Kennedy. Jeremy, how are you? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no problem. We are, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us. So my first question we always ask everybody is, how did they get into mixed martial arts? How I got into mixed martial arts? It was uh, probably the biggest thing was growing up. I was the youngest sibling, you know, and I was fighting with my older brother, who's a lot bigger and a lot older than me. So uh, that kind of drifted me into jiu-jitsu because we were always wrestling and, uh, you know, using jiu-jitsu. As, and he didn't know it, so I was able to, like, Submit him a couple of times and he would get all choked. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I got I got uh, naturally kind of good at it and started competing in jiu-jitsu. Okay. And winning some gold medals and stuff like that. And then uh, I kind of transitioned into boxing, wrestling in high school, just mixing it all. And then I, I put it all together when I was 16 and I've been fighting, you know, since then. I've had uh, 18 fights now. Yeah. And now you're only 23, correct? Uh, 24. Oh, yeah. okay. You were 23 when you made your de- debut, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and what age did you start doing uh, BJJ? Uh, thirteen. Thirteen. Wow. Now does uh, did, does your yeah, brother 13. do does your brother do uh, BJJ too? Um. After like once I started, you know. Once you started kicking his ass. A couple times he started. Yeah. Yeah. He started coming <laughs> to the gym, and he he's got a, he's got his blue belt now. Okay. But he hasn't trained in a while now. Okay. But, uh, yeah. He kind of picked it up as a hobby to hang out with me a bit, and then that's it. So, so tell the people who's listening at home who you train with, uh, what school, who are some of your teammates we should know about. Yeah, man, uh, I got I've worked, I got probably the best team here in uh, BC or Western Canada for that. It's uh, training at Revolution Martial Arts, and uh, Viviano Fernandez is always in the room. He fights in uh, one yep. championship, yep. Bantam champ. Um, we got a lot of local guys here too. Gary Mangit, who fights you know international, nine and one record. Jamie Siraj. Christian Tremaine, just a bunch of guys, man, all around my weight class, either, you know, 35, 45, or 55, so we got a good mix, and about 15 guys in the room usually, so, so it's, it's good, man. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Bibiano Fernandez, he's a guy who's, who's ranked in our top 10 rankings, he's been a guy who's been ranked for a very yeah. long time, if if you're a casual fan, or I, shouldn't, I don't want to say casual fan, but if you don't know who Bibiano is, he's one of the top talents outside of the UFC, um, he's been one of the top talents for a very yeah. long time, he's very exciting. Um, definitely check out any videos of him. He fights, like you said, he fights in one FC. Um, he's a guy that I've been dying to get in the UFC. Unfortunately, he he signed. Well, I shouldn't say unfortunately. Good for him because I'm sure he got a yeah, good, he good payday. Yeah, he did sign. I'm sure he got a big payday, but unfortunately for us, we didn't get to see him. Uh, we were hoping he'd sign with the UFC, but he, uh, he he's over there in one FC. So um, yeah. So so one thing interesting when I was doing some backstory about you is that you trained in Thailand. Tell us how that happened. Um, yeah, well, I was, uh, this is, I uh, just turned pro, this is back in 2014 or late 13, and, uh, yeah, they, they were, Team Quest had a affiliation out, out in Thailand, and they were just, you know, really trying to pump up their MMA program, so they, uh, were offering sponsorships for a year long to go live out there, and, uh, I just kind of scrolled through it, and then fired off an application, and, uh, I was 2-0 and at the time, and yeah, they got back to me, and I was on the plane the next month, and I lived out there for a year. They like brought guys from all around the world. We had uh, a couple guys from New Zealand, Australia, you know, Malaysia, England, America, everything like that. So it's kind of cool how we were like an international fight team, you know, brought together from all over the world. And then I had a few fights out there, uh, Muay Thai fight, and uh, yeah, after at the end of my year, I came home, and I still plan on going back at some point, yep. but uh, at this point right now, the, my training's just it's, it's going good here. I've set up a pretty good camp for myself and everything like that. Everything I, I need is, is local here, so I mean, I, 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 I want to go over there maybe for another month or two just as like a, a training vacation. You know, I, can't, okay. I can't just take time off, yeah. but uh, I get to go somewhere tropical and, and still get some training in. Yeah, me and you both have a different definition of what uh a vacation is my vi- my vacation wouldn't consist yeah. of uh badass muay thai guys kicking me in the face um yeah. <laughs> so exactly. so you know so, so let's talk about 
let's talk about your debut. Um, you debuted uh, UFC on Fox 21 back in August um, in your in uh, yeah. your uh, home country. Uh, how did yeah. the call come in? Uh, like, how did you get the call for the UFC? How did that all um, transpire? Yeah, well, it was, uh, I mean, and they were coming right to my hometown, so I figured it out. I was 8-0 at the time, and I was the local, like, organization, regional scene here. I was, I was the 145 champ, stuff like that, main eventing all the time out here. So I, I just had a really good feeling that, you know, they were going to pick me up. And uh, it, it got a couple weeks in, and, and I wasn't hearing anything, but I was still training for that date. And then about at the five-week mark, like five weeks out, they uh, offered me a fight, but the stipulation was that it was up a weight class, you know. So I, I still jumped all over it. You don't say no to the to the UFC. And, uh, yeah, so I went in there and got the job done. Had a late notice um, replacement, too, so it was kind of a big uh, mess around. And once that got done, I, I like, stuck to my guns, and I was like, man, I'm going to drop down. And so I, that's why I had to wait a little bit longer. It's been six months. But uh, I've been training the whole time. I, I haven't stopped training, you know. And, uh, yeah, now I've got a, a proper weight class, full camp. I'm excited, man. This is a great fight for me. So you originally uh, were supposed to fight Josh Emmett, who is a really good fighter, uh, making a good name for himself in the uh, UFC. Uh, the last second replacement comes in Alex Ricci, a guy who's a uh, big name in Canada. He also made his debut that night. What yeah. adjustments did you have to make switching? And it was you really didn't get a camp for him at all. You kind of switched the week of the fight. Yeah. Yeah, it was a week out, so I mean, I didn't, uh, I couldn't really switch it up. You know, it was all the training was done. Um, it was just a different body that was in there come fight night, and uh, my my game plan kind of shifted in the fight. You know, I had to. Uh, Richie's a lot taller yep. than Emmett was, yep. so and, and Richie is primarily a, primarily a striker. That's it. You know, so I, I had to take uh, take that away from him. And uh, I took no damage in the fight and everything like that, and it uh, went my way. For Emmett, I would have had to fight a little differently. I still think uh, that's still a good fight for me, but I'm just proper, happy that I get to drop down to my uh, normal weight class now. Yeah, and, uh, that, that, I got I got the I got the size and frame on these guys, you know, so I think that's gonna be a huge attribute. For me. Okay, so you're going down and wait till 145. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, you're nine yeah. days away from the fight. Uh, you're eight days away from weigh-ins. What is your current weight? Yeah, I'm pretty much walking around right now that at the same weight I walked into my last fight at, at about 160, right? That's, okay. And that's where I want to be. I've, I've I've took this camp and I've done it properly, and I like to sit at about this weight for uh, the last week out, you know, before I get on that plane, I want to be, you know, right where I am. And, uh -huh. I mean, I, I leave Sunday morning, so okay. I mean, these next few days I'm just kind of coasting and eating what I've been always eating, and, uh, and we're we'll fly right into fight week. Okay. Now, um, you said you're leaving Sunday morning? Yeah, I, I moved this a little bit. I get there a day early. Okay. Because I want to get uh, an extra training session in there. Sure. To kind of get used to climatize to that, that uh, humidity. Okay. Um, how long is the flight? Do you know? Uh, it's about 17 hours travel time. Oh, jeez. A couple layovers and stuff like that. But, that's, again, it's, it's, I'm leaving a, a full week ahead of my fight. I'm not too worried about it. You know, I've uh -huh. I flew to Thailand a bunch. I flew to uh, Manila just, just recently to corner Bibiano in his last fight there. And I'm used to the long, I'm used to the long travel. Now, have you, you, have you been to Brazil before? No, I haven't. I've always wanted to. Okay. So this is kind of a cool experience. I get, I get paid to go there now. Yeah. Now, is it, are you going to have, you think you have any time to see some sites or anything like that? Uh, I, I pushed back my flight as well. For another day later, so I I fly out the next Monday, okay. like the following Monday. So I'll, I'll have all day Sunday to really get out and do things. I mean, throw fight week if I get some spare time and I have some energy with the, the amount of food I'm eating, I'll try to get out and see, see what I can. But I'm going to be focusing on my fight, and then fight's going to come through, and then I'll have uh, yeah the Saturday night and all day Sunday to kind of experience it. Uh -huh. And yeah, try to squeeze it all in, and I'm gone on Monday back home. Yeah. No, that's cool. That you get to, even if you get to just go to the beach for a half a day or anything, is still kind of cool. Yeah, kind of reward. Kinda... Hopefully, as a reward for the yeah, exactly. you know camp and everything. So I just want to backtrack yeah. to to your fight with Richie before we uh, focus on uh, uh, Jason. Uh, so yeah. you take on Richie, um, like you said, he's a lot different than Emmett. Emmett is this 
short kind of uh, re- boxer wrestler kind of guy, kind of guy who throws hands and yeah. wrestling while uh, Richie is a lot longer fighter, likes to use kicks and that. Um, yeah. You Just to recap, if anybody hasn't seen the fight, um, you kind of pressed the pace. You did a lot of good work in the pocket. It seemed like you were landing in the pocket. Um, you did a lot of work yeah. in the clinch. seemed like you were tiring him out in the clinch. And then I think the big difference in the fight was that you got uh, you know four or five takedowns. Is that how you expected yeah. the fight to go? Was that part of the game plan, or was it just kind of the flow of the fight? Yeah, I mean, uh, that wasn't the game plan. Uh, I kind of wish I, I broke off with the success I was having on my feet. Like, that was one of those ones that I grew a lot. You know, I look back at the tape, I'm like, man, I should. I would have just kept it out on the feet. I, I probably could have put that guy away, man. I was, I was landing everything on him, but I just kept engaging in that clinch afterwards. But I just had that, like, tunnel vision, you know? Uh-huh. It was working for me. But, like I said, I grew from that, you know? Uh, I was expecting it to take him down a lot easier off the cage, but, yeah, he had good base, and that was also with his size, you know? He's a bigger guy. Yeah, he's yeah, a big guy. He had 15 guy. pounds on me, in the, yeah, in the cage. Like, when, after the fight, I, I asked him what he was weighing, and he was, uh, like I said, I walked in at 161 after rehydrating and everything, and uh, he was at 173, so he had a full, you know, almost almost 15 pounds on me, and, and I felt it on the cage, you know, I, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, but, I mean, I did, and I kind of had to change things up, and, uh, yeah, I'm so glad I went with my way, but it definitely wasn't my, you know, favorite performance. Now, did you feel any of those? the debut, that's what you got to do. Did you feel any of those octagon, uh, excuse me, octagon jitters? Ah, not too much, man. Like, being the first fight of the night helped me get through that pretty quick. You know, uh, I didn't have to think too much about it. I was just, I woke up, you know, got showered, head to the venue, and we were, we were it was almost go time, you know. So yeah. I fought around like 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which, which made it easy. I, I wasn't hanging around in the locker rooms all night, seeing all these guys that I've seen on the, on the UFC cards warming up and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I got through it fine, and I didn't really feel anything too, too dramatic. So. Now, you had the hometown crowd. They were chanting, and one thing they were chanting was JBC, which is your nickname, <laughs> which uh, Brian yeah. Stan pointed out stands for Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, which I got to say <laughs> is we had one thing we do here. Uh, we do this thing called Calling the Fight, yeah. and we love talking about people's nicknames, uh, some of our favorites. Yeah. And one of them is uh, Bilal, remember the name Muhammad. Uh, JBC yeah. is is going to be up there. That's that's going to go in the the Hall of Fame with uh, uh, <laughs> the Dirty Bird, with the Barn Cat. Uh, yeah. those. So uh, tell us, <laughs> is it just you eat a lot of Burger King? Like, How did the nickname come along? Yeah, it's, uh, like I said, I've been fighting – you know, in the cage and amateur and everything like that until I was 16. So, uh, I was always the young guy on my team of the junior, and uh, I, I was so uneducated on the diets, man. I was I was eating McDonald's and high school student, you know, not really caring, yeah, uneducated on everything, and uh, eat, yeah, eating McDonald's and still fighting and everything like that, and uh, making the weight, and they're, they're, you know, really sat me down, my coaches, and like, hey, you, you got to really... Uh, clean up your diet, you know, and let's, let's, let's be a professional here. And so I was like, okay, me not knowing anything, I, a week went by, and they're like, all right, so how, how's your diet going? I was like, oh, it's all good, man. I switched, I switched to Wendy's. No more McDonald's. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, uh, and I was dead serious, man. I thought it was all good because, you know, it's a little bit more healthy, a little bit more yeah. fresh. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so then they ca- started calling me Junior Bacon Cheeseburger, and it just stuck, you know, you're not giving your nickname. I mean, you're not, uh, yeah. you don't make your own, you know, you're giving them. So, so kind of stuck to me and it kind of flows together and that's it. I don't know who your manager is, but he definitely got to go over to Wendy's and get, get a sponsorship on, on your banner and everything. Yeah. Get the, uh, <laughs> get the little redheaded girl yeah. on the banner. Um, so one thing I, I know, uh, no. obviously one thing that you noticed watching the fight, one thing Brian Stan kept pointing out is that you had this huge crowd cheering for you. At one point they, they pan over and the play, there's this like whole section of people going crazy. Do you have any idea how many yeah. people? Um, were there? Do you have like a number of how many people were there watching you? No, man, I I, I don't. I like the local fights that I would have here, like before before the UFC, I would usually you know draw like a couple hundred people just by me selling my own tickets, you know, from the mm. promoter. So I and all those same people told me they were coming, and you know I was hearing of them buying tickets and everything like that. So 
I would imagine there's a couple hundred. I have, I, I don't know. Yeah, have no, it, it, it looked like that. Estimate, it looked like it looked like you had a whole oh. like couple sections, and they were they were enjoying themselves. Yeah. Um, how many people are co- it, coming it, to Brazil it, with you? Uh, just just me and my family. You know, a like close family, my mom, my dad, stuff like that, my coaches. But uh, yeah, it's a little different. I'm going from my backyard to his. Yeah. So it should be different. Okay, so let's transition that. You're going to Brazil. The Brazilian crowd is always a rocking crowd. Um. Have you been preparing yeah. that mental aspect? They're gonna obviously, you know, you're gonna come in, you're gonna come out to booths. He's gonna come into chairs. They're gonna be chanting, oh, you yeah. know, "You're gonna die." You know, you hear the, what yeah, they say it in Portuguese. The whole crowd will be chanting, "You're gonna die." Have you mentally prepared yourself yeah. for that? Have you been doing things in, in gym to kind of? Prepare? Oh yeah, man. Okay. Oh yeah, it's all my all my downtime. I'm thinking about that, you know, and uh, this fuels me. You know, I, I'm excited to go go there and and play spoiler. You know, I'm gonna. And it, Honey's from that that Sierra, like right from Fortaleza, you know. So he's like okay. t- generally their their hometown boy, you know. And uh, I get to go go in there, and this Canadian kid, the only Canadian on the card, is going to go and put a whooping on their boy and fly out of their country, and that's it. You know, that's, I'm ready for it, man. I'm excited for it. Okay. Uh, one thing I, I will mention is that my wife is from Canada, so every time we watch cards together, she yeah. is always rooting really hard for the Canadians. So I'll let you know that there'll at least be one more person at home cheering for you. So let's talk specifically. There we go. Yeah, uh, let's talk specifically about uh, Hani. He, obviously, he's been in the UFC a long time. Without obviously giving away too much of your strategy, what weaknesses do you see in him that you think you can exploit? Um, I, I see. He, you know, he gets he gets a little flat footed. You know, once the fight drags on and gets into the more deeper waters, you know, he, he doesn't, uh, he's not one of those guys who who's the same same guy in the first round as he is the third, you know, and that's something I've, I've always been in my career, you know, okay. so uh, that, that's just one little thing I, I noticed, and uh, I, I mean, he's he's great on the ground, he's, he's got some heavy hands on yep. the feet, so I gotta be on my game, but uh, yeah. And and he's been, I mean, he's been in the I UFC guess, for a while too, so he's got experience. Oh, yeah, he, He's a Brazilian Ultimate Fighter winner, you know. So it's going to be a huge feather in my cap when I get this this done next weekend. Now, obviously, you're undefeated. A lot of times, you hear fighters talk about being undefeated. Do you feel any extra pressure? Because every single time they announce you, they always say undefeated. Uh, do you feel more pressure yeah. heading into a fight undefeated or no? No, man. Uh, it's it's the UFC record now. You know, it you can be whatever you want to get the call to the UFC, but like realistically I'm I'm one and all. You know, that's that's it. I, I care about my, my UFC record. I wanna keep that intact just like I would you know, any anything. If I had some losses outside of the UFC and I came in with a ten and five record, you know, and I won my first one, I'm still one and all. Okay. You know, so it's 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 a matter of just winning in the UFC. I'm I'm fighting for my job here, I'm fighting for my livelihood. Sure. I'm fighting for half half my money, you know, this guy's trying to take half my money. So I gotta I'm going. To, I got enough pressure on myself. I don't got to worry about the O beside my my record to add some more. Okay, so um, we always do this thing we call the fan forum question. So we're at the fan forum question. Uh, this comes from Brenda yeah. Saint Pierre. It says from Quebec, so I'm assuming that's uh, in Quebec, Canada. Um, yeah. So I'm assuming that's it. It doesn't say, but uh, her her question is: If you could have dinner with anybody, living or dead, who would you pick? <laughs> That's about to put me right on the spot there, eh? Okay. Oh, man. Hey, hey, we got an A. We got our first, <laughs> we got our first A. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'll just throw my boy Nate Diaz. You know, he's my favorite fighter in the UFC. That'd be pretty cool to go uh, hang out with him. Okay. I'll get some training in afterwards or something. Okay, so Nate, Nate Diaz. That... that I, that would be a fun. I would admit that would be a fun person to talk, talk with, hang out with. Um, yeah. I can only imagine where it would go. Know? Yeah, I, I can only imagine where it would go. Yeah. Um, and I'm assuming when you yeah. guys are having, I'm assuming when you're having dinner, you're doing it at Wendy's, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. So one thing we always do, we always have the the fighters predict the uh, main event. The main event of the night is uh, obviously a Brazilian legend. Uh, Vitor Belfort, he's fighting Kelvin Gastelum. Do you have a prediction for that fight? Um, I, I'd say probably Gastelum by uh, submission in the second round. Okay. And how about your fight? What's the prediction for your fight? Uh, Jeremy JBC Kennedy with his arm raised. Uh, no, no way of it's no, going to happen? No, no knockout, I'm, I'm submission, not nothing like that? 
No, I don't. I don't. I don't usually do those kind of predictions. Okay. All right. So uh, my very last question is, uh, Jeremy, have you submitted to the takeover? Uh, yes, I'm Jeremy Kennedy, and I've submitted to the takeover. Uh, Jeremy, all the people here, we just want to thank you for your time. We welcome you to the MMA Takeover family. And ladies and gentlemen, that was awesome. Jeremy Kennedy. Make sure to check him out next Saturday, March 11th, against Ronnie Jason. Also, make sure to check out our site, the MMA Takeover.com. That's the MMA Takeover.com for all the best MMA coverage. Also, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. We thank you once again for listening.